Okay, so let's go to the next one, which is free. So now, if, say for the group elements, other than E, the identity element, the group action has no fixed point, then we say the action is free. So what is, what does fixed point means? So X in some manifold M is a fixed point if there exists you know, some G in the group such that when G acts on X, let me use the action uh, uh, from some G uh, in, let me sorry, some G in the group where say G is not the identity, uh, such that when G acts on that element of that point, it gives me the same point back, okay? So then we say X is a fixed point. So essentially what it means that if you have some elements in your group such that when it, it, when it is acting on this element, it does not take, when it's acting on this point on your manifold, it is not taking you somewhere else. Then we say that that point on the manifold is a fixed point of that action. Okay. So let's look at an example. So the North Pole of say, or the South Pole are fixed points of the SO2 rotation around the Z axis of SO3. So SO3 acts naturally, SO3 acts on S2, right? So we have defined an action. So, you know, this is a, let me unpack this a little bit, okay. So the group we are taking is SO3. And the manifold we are taking is S2. But there are points on the manifold, such as say the North Pole, say, which is a uh, zero, zero, one. And so this is the North Pole, say PN. And the South Pole, which is zero, zero, minus one, right? And these points are fixed points of the SO2 action, which is the rotation around the Z axis, right? So here we have an action which is not free. So sigma, which is the, uh, you know, let me just say sigma, which is the action of SO3 on the two sphere is not free because it has, you know, we can choose these fixed points if we choose the subgroup uh, SO2 around the z-axis. If you choose a different subgroup, we'll get different fixed points, right? So now can somebody tell me, give me a 
an example of a group action that is free. Translation. Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, if we translate an object, that would move every point to a new point. Sorry, you, your sound is really bad. Is that Saif? Yes, sorry, it's Saif. Okay, Saif, can you, uh, your sound is really bad. Yeah, I turned off the fan. So um, <clears throat> I was saying translating an object would be a group action where there would be no- Very good, yeah. Them. So, yeah. So if I take, um, say, um, the translation group, say R4 or Minkowski space, right? So the action of the translation group on Minkowski space, if G is say R4 and M is the Minkowski space, then that is an example of a, of the translation of, of a uh, action without fixed points, right? Yeah, good. Any other examples? That's a, so this is free. What about a compact example? This is a non-compact group. Is there any other compact example we discussed today, which was, uh, which had a free action? On a circle. Exactly. If I take G to be U1 or SO2 and M to be the circle, then that's also free. There is no fixed point, okay? Okay, so so I think, you know, this is, uh, the next one is actually pretty uh, similar, but um, sometimes gets confused with the, the free. And number three is the effective, a group can be, a group action can be effective. Okay, so what is effective? So if for all points on a manifold, for all points, so for all, not just there must exist one, or, you know, if for all points on a manifold, the only in a group element that, you know, satisfies G acting on X, giving you X is G equals to E, then the action is effective. Okay. So, for example, um, so we have to essentially, if we take, we have to take every element G from the group and apply it on all the X's for all the X's. And if we find that for all the X's that this is true only for you know, G equals to E, then we say that the action is effective. So my question is, is the group action of SO3 on S2 effective or not? So we take all the X, all the G's, right? So 
So, you know, let's look at the elements which are, uh, which leave the North Pole, uh, say, uh, in, you know, the North Pole uh, fixed, right? So we know that that's actually SO2Z, right? That's a subgroup that's going to keep the North Pole, uh, you know, uh, unchanged. But when it's acting on the other points, the other points are changing place, right? So if it's not the North Pole, then the action of this point of this uh, group is going to, uh, it's not going to satisfy this, right? So, uh, sorry, it does satisfy this only for G equal to E, right? So that means that the group action of SO3 on S2 is effective. Okay, so an effective action doesn't have to be free. But if the action is free, then it has to be effective. Okay. So this is a little subtle, uh, you know, the, the, the difference between effective and free, okay? So for something to be effective, you basically have to say that, you know, um, you have to look at all the, you know, you have to look at the action of a group element on all the, uh, all the points on the manifold. And if, you know, this is satisfied, if, sorry, if this is satisfied only for G equals to E, then it is effective. So can someone give me an example of an effective action? Another effective action. So what about the action of U1 on S1. If I take, um, you know, um, if I take some point, say X in S1, and uh, if I apply all the Gs on this X, the only time when this will be true is when G is E, right? Okay. I don't think I got this part. Doesn't SO2Z have fixed points in the North and South Pole? Yes, it does, yes, but uh, but it also has that action on the other points is, you know, does not satisfy this relationship, right? It has to satisfy for all, all X have to be fixed for it to count as effective. Yeah, it has to be like this and only for this. So there are non-trivial elements of SO2, you know, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, exactly, yeah. It, all, it has to be for all the elements.
sorry, it has to be for all the points. That's what I mean. It has to be for all the points on the manifold, right? So, um, yeah, this is a bit confusing. So we have a manifold and, you know, we have some group action, which takes us from one point to another, right? X goes to X prime, G say acting on X. And um, now, If you find that for, and if you find that this is uh, true, say for all X, but only, uh, when G is E, then we say the action is effective. So now how does this relate to our particular example? Our particular example was that, you know, G acting on the North Pole, so it was P North, which satisfies this thing, right? And of course, this is not, you know, um, you know, again, this is also not G is not equals to E, right? So this has no, um, you know, so, and also there are other points which are not the North Pole on our two sphere, where when this acts, this is not the same point, right? So, okay, so would a 360 degree rotation not, uh, be the same as the zero degree rotation? Yes, it is the same rotation, yes. Okay, so that doesn't count. That doesn't, that isn't one. For right, one. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we see that, you know, this is going to be for, for, for SO2, uh, for SO3, um, acting on S2, uh, you know, this is true, right? That this thing is, you know, if I take uh, some, any point and then, you know, apply as some SO3 action on it, then, uh, you know, it's, this is going to be true only for J equals to E, right? So, 